My name is Roger Cohn. I'm chairman of the physiology department here, and I'm going to talk to you today about understanding obesity. Of course, you all know that uh, we're in the midst of an obesity epidemic, both here in the U.S. and around the world. And this is a bad thing, as you also know, because it increases the risk of, uh, it increases the prevalence of a number of different diseases. Diabetes, heart disease, even cancer. Um, the risk of these in are increased with the increasing body mass index as shown for men in the top chart and uh, for women in the bottom chart. But in this obesogenic environment in, in which we have access essentially to unlimited numbers of calories and very few of us do physical labor for a living anymore, what's remarkable is not that society is becoming obese, but indeed that body weight is as stable as it is. Uh, for most of us, our body weight over time looks something like this graph here. And um, indeed, if you look at how we gain weight, typically it's very slowly. So you'll graduate college, maybe you weigh 170, next thing you know, 30 years later, you're 30 pounds overweight. What that means is that you're storing a pound or 3,500 kcals per year more than you're burning. But when you look at that on a day-to-day -day basis, it means you're storing only 10 kcals per day more than you're burning, or about one potato chip. That's all it takes to explain the obesity epidemic. And, see, and so what you can see is that indeed, even in the light of the obesity epidemic, our brains are keeping our body weight constant. Actually, this has been known since the mid-50s from the work of Kennedy and others, and it's illustrated in drug studies, diet studies, in rodents, in humans. This data shows typical uh, response to a diet aid, uh, the drug fentermine. The patient loses 20 or 30 kilograms, and when drug treatment stops, within a year and a half, the patient is back up to his or her previous weight. Um, the same observation is found with diets, and furthermore, typically diets only produce five to 10 kilograms of weight loss, and uh, this meta-analysis and others show that in, a, in the population as a whole, even the diet type doesn't matter. Atkins, Zone, Weight Watcher, uh, people lose about the same amount of, of weight. So I've, I've told you about energy homeostasis and um, the fact that the brain is regulating body weight homeostatically. And this is not good news. And, and also, this contradicts everything you read every day in the grocery store. So despite what Dr. Oz says, uh, there is no five-day fat blast diet. Um, uh, we all have the same basal metabolic rate. There is no way to reignite your metabolism through diet. Um, uh, no one is going to walk off 100 pounds. Um, we know from the clinical research of Rudy Leibel at the Rockefeller that uh, to simply maintain a 10-pound weight loss requires an additional hour per day of aerobic exercise. Um, and uh, lastly, um, there are no flat belly burgers, pizzas, and shakes, uh, leastwise ones that you would want to eat. But the good news is that um, scientists have begun to discover the molecular basis uh, for the regulation of body weight by the brain. Beginning in the 1990s, working with monogenic obesity strains in the mouse called OBDB, fatty, tubby, and agouti, we began to understand how the brain controls the amount of fat that you store. OB and DB uh, were shown to control, uh, to encode the adipostatic hormone leptin and its receptor, work of Jeff Friedman at the Rockefeller, and our group did the research leading to the understanding of obesity in the yellow agouti mouse, and it allowed us to discover the central melanic cortin system one of the key central circuits regulating energy homeostasis. We now know that no matter how you block melanocortin signaling in the brain, uh, you produce obesity, and this system is conserved all the way from zebrafish to humans. Indeed, the most common cause of um, syndromic obesity in humans results from haploinsufficiency of the MC4 receptor, illustrated um, in this child on the right. And uh, so the research in my lab is focused on understanding the adipostat and the circuitry that regulates body weight. Much like a, a thermostat in the room senses energy in the system and uh, turns on or off the furnace to control the amount of energy in the system, this circuitry uh, controls 
food intake and energy expenditure to maintain energy stores constant. And um, stimulation of the system shown on the right activates neurons such as neurons regulating feeding um, to inhibit food intake. Uh, circuits on the left enter into this, this adipostatic system, inhibit the firing of MC4 neurons to stimulate food intake and stimulate food storage. So our long-term goal at energy storage, our long-term goal is to understand the molecular pharmacology of the adipostat and to therefore be able to develop uh, truly useful therapeutics, not only for obesity, but for weight loss and disease cachexia as well.